Hello and welcome to Sincerely Speaking. I'm Marcy Amaro. I welcome you today to this amazing conversation that I know is going to be so valuable for all of you who listen to it or watch. I am so excited to have Crystal Tharp with me here today. I discovered Crystal because the Lord is good and He just points you to great people. And I found her on Facebook and immediately fell in love with what she does. And then we had a conversation in which we hit it off right away. And I know that what she has to offer for all of us today is going to be impactful and grateful and it's going to point us towards organizing our lives a little bit more. Crystal, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you for that warm welcome, Marcy. It's great. It's a pleasure to be with you. Life can be everything you want it to be. Don't believe me? I challenge you to take me up on the offer to get on a 30-minute call with me where we will discuss exactly how to get you from where you are to where you want to be, how to put all the pieces in your life in place so you no longer feel pulled in a million different directions, and how to lead yourself to unparalleled and unwavering success. You ready to take your life to the next level? Then stick around, Sincerely Speaking, and head on over to marciamaro.com after you listen to today's episode so you can schedule your 30-minute path paving call with me where we will talk about where you are right now, where you want to go, how to get there, and we will start you on a path to the life, the business, the relationships, the fulfillment, the joy that you've been looking for. I can't wait to meet you in person. Enjoy this episode and share it with somebody you love. I am so excited for this, honestly. I have had the pleasure of interviewing a lot of people, never had a professional organizer in my show before. And I, as I was telling you when we had our previous conversation, I'm all about removing chaos and simplifying things. So I'm really excited for where this conversation takes us. But let's begin by talking a little bit about exactly what you do and how you got into it. So I am now a home organization coach, uh, organization and productivity coach. And I help my clients to streamline their home, their life, and their their family life so that they can experience the blessings that come with organization and productivity and ultimately pursue what it is that, you know, is on their hearts that God has put on their hearts to pursue. And, um, you know, there's so many things that uh, get in the way of that, uh, you know, we get frustrated, we get distracted, we get um, just overwhelmed. And <clears throat> by having systems in place to streamline all the aspects of your life, you can spend more time doing the things that uh, are on your heart. Awesome. Amazing. Tell us a little bit more about your journey getting there. Like there's a lot that you just said that I want to come back to, but I want everybody to hear the wonderful story of how you got to where you are today. So I uh, first began as a professional organizer about uh, 10 years ago, and uh, I was working with clients in their homes, organizing top to bottom, like everything from drawers to massive garages. And uh, I was finding that, um, you know, I was able to teach these skills, these organizational skills and decluttering skills. But um, what was difficult to teach was what was going on in my head, the the, the mm -hmm. The, the whole process to um, implementing a streamlined approach into your life, it's, you know, goes kind of beyond just the organized spaces. It's really creating a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so um, I could only bring my clients so far into that journey. And uh, I was really on my heart to help them experience more of a, a transformation that took place within as well. And this came full circle for me when I became a mom, because I really started to see that, you know, I could organize to a point and then I started to run in, into some obstacles, like time was not on my side, like it used to be. I had a lot less time and, uh, you know, with th having four kids within, or excuse me, three kids within four years, um, I found that uh, my priorities were changing and we had a lot more things coming into the house. And um, it was just really hard to get a grasp of my space, my time and my energy. And I knew that I had to make some changes. And so when I started to do some trial and error, I learned that by having efficient systems in place, um, it really does allow um, us to bring out our best self in um, how we feel about where where our, our where we dwell, how we feel about our spaces, and um, how we can you know ultimately 
um, use our energy to get more done by finding out a healthy balance. And so there's all these different aspects to this transformation that I went through that I now get to help my clients go through. That is so outstanding. So I want to go back a little bit. You mentioned feeling overwhelmed, and that's uh, an emotion that I hear my clients and the people that I work with mention all the time. So I want to talk a little bit about that because I, I think you're going to agree with me a little bit that our environments tend to contribute to that sense of overwhelm, right? Let's talk about that for a little bit. Absolutely. So one of the things that I, um, <laughs> we were very blessed, I will say, with um, the gift giving that we were receiving with all the toys that were coming in, only grandkids on both sides. And uh, we were just being blessed consistently uh, with lots and lots of toys. And uh, in addition to all the toys that were coming in, we, you know, we just had an abundance of paper coming in through the mail. And it just felt like there was just lots of things, you know, clothes and, and just all kinds of trinkets and are, I started to feel very overwhelmed with all the things. And the reason for that was because I didn't have places to put them. We, you know, we, I felt like we were outgrowing our space and I felt like I really didn't have a, a grasp on a system that would allow me to clear clutter out of my, my visual site mm -hmm. and um, free me of that overwhelm. So that really, um, it, it was because of that overwhelm that really uh, like kind of forced me to focus on some solutions yeah. where, you know, my, my house was very organized, but um, there were some, some aspects of my life that were very disorganized. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, then I started experiencing guilt, you know, for not being able to keep up on things and it really kind of, um, started to affect a lot of different areas of my life. So the overwhelm that started with clutter started to create overwhelm in my relationships. And, you know, it just kind of spiraled from there. Yeah. And um, I actually did experience postpartum depression. So that was kind of in addition to all the overwhelm. And, um, you know, it's very common for a lot of moms to experience that, um, you know, Go, going through that experience and praise the Lord, I was able to overcome that. And um, I, in addition to the systems that I learned, mm -hmm. I was finally able to overcome that overwhelm. And I found that um, having consistent habits and systems in place made a huge difference for me. Oh, absolutely. And um, again, this idea that overwhelm is just something that kind of is there and you have to deal, you have to accept it, right? It's such a lie, <laughs> right? Because overwhelm mm -hmm. does come, but there are things that we can do to set ourselves up for success around that overwhelm and to eliminate it, or at least lessen it to the place where we can be functional and mm -hmm. not have to be like overloaded by it and taken down by it, right? Yes. That's so cool. So let's talk a little bit about this word that you keep repeating, which is systems. Now, I find that a lot of the people that I work with come to me with, well, I don't have time or I can't do this or I lose my motivation or I can't just seem to get myself to do certain things. Now, I believe that if they had the right systems in place, that would help a lot of that. But let's talk a little bit about what you mean by systems and how do they help in the everyday. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because um, I, I feel like with time, it's it's a hard thing for people to grasp. You know, it's like they they know that time is limited and they know that time goes by very fast and uh, they have a full calendar. They can consider themselves very busy. So it's hard for them to feel like they have any free time. Mm -hmm. And if they do have free time. The last thing that they honestly want to do is get organized, spend that time trying to get organized because there's so many other things that are, that they consider a priority. And so um, it's very common for, um, for women to struggle with setting aside time for organizing. Yeah. Um, but the, the key to this is that you know, we often make things more complicated than they need to be. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of times in our head, we think that this is going to be a lot of work. Like I'm not cut out for this. I don't have time for this. I can't, I can't do this, especially not right now. Life is crazy. But um, the truth is, is that, you know, by carving out small chunks of time consistently, 
day after day, it does create an amazing pattern. And it, it just takes the smallest little step consistently day after day to see amazing progress. And, you know, for some people that they're uh, maybe frustrated and impatient with, you know, they want overnight results where we live this day and age where, you know, we want immediate gratification and we want immediate results. And we want like lifestyle changes like that. Yesterday. But, but <laughs> it, life doesn't work like that. And honestly, God's timing doesn't work like that either. Mm-hmm. And so I, I really, um, this was also a faith journey for me. A faith, um, I was growing in my faith as I was going through this myself, learning that, you know, of course I want immediate results too. I was overwhelmed, but I had to trust in the Lord that his timing was perfect, mm-hmm. far better than what I could create in my own idea of what time is. And by really leaning on him for that, I was patient. I was, he was, he developed some patience within me and I was able to find that creating small habits mm. led to small routines, which led to small systems. And so it was this kind of stringing along healthy habits that were ultimately replacing the bad habits that I was getting myself into yeah. learning to, you know, make that pivot and then stringing these habits together to create like a, a routine, a solid, consistent routine day after day incorporating time blocking, habit stacking, all the techniques that, you know, people swear by they work, Mm -hmm. but it takes consistency. And that's really what a system is. It's a consistent way of doing something repeatedly over and over um, that has been proven to work and really just, um, you know, finding a way to use that system so that it serves you and your household best. And I think sometimes we get stuck in the, oh, well, that, you know, that worked for so-and-so, but it didn't work for me. <laughs> well, then you, then you have to adapt the system to fit you and your lifestyle. Yeah. And so that's, um, there's a lot of different things that you have to consider when you put that together, but it is absolutely possible for everyone if they can be disciplined enough to, for one, get started and two, be consistent. Absolutely. And the thing about systems I have found, and uh, let me know if you agree, is that at first they take a lot of effort and focus and time and energy to put in place. But once they're working the way they're supposed to, they save you so much time and energy and focus and stress, right? (laughs) Absolutely. That is is absolutely true. And, you know, sometimes it's, um, you know, we don't see the, the changes that are happening, but I think it's so important to take moments to pause and reflect back on where you were when you first started and, and acknowledge how far you've come because that will that will create that motivation to keep going and, and keep sticking with it because change can be hard for people. Mm-hmm. But um, when you you know acknowledge that that change has actually started, you're seeing results from that change. Um, you know it's important to um, you know acknowledge that and. Um, I, I'm a big believer in, in praise. And I just, I, you know, I know that the Lord is with us when we, when we seek him mm-hmm. and, you know, we have to take time out to pause and praise him for the way, the journey that he's taking us on. Absolutely. And one of the things that I experienced myself is uh, I lost a lot of weight at one point in my life. Right. And the reason I'm saying this is because as I was losing the weight, I knew I was doing what I was supposed to do, but I didn't really notice the difference in myself until somebody else pointed it out. Right. So Mm -hmm. it took a while. And in fact, it took several months before I saw someone that wasn't seeing me every day and they went, "Oh, oh my gosh, you're so little compared to the way you were. And I was like, what? No, I'm pretty much the same. And they were like, no, 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 no. Let's prove you wrong. Right. And they helped me see how far I had come. And I think it's similar in what you do, right? Like people are doing little things and they might not see the results right away. I know this happens with my clients all the time too. We have systems and systems in place to help them notice and track their progression because otherwise they can go through the entire program and work with me for a year and not realize how far they've come if we don't have this. So I just, I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
So let's talk a little bit about adapting to new things. You mentioned that there was a process of you adapting to your kids and to the changes in your own life. And I'm sure that in the work you do with people, especially in the coaching piece, there's a lot of adapting. <laughs> so yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it can certainly be hard if if you are a, a creature of you know habit doing something the same way and you don't like change it, it can be hard to step into something new mm-hmm. but um you know oftentimes you know we expect to get different results by doing the same thing and it really you know doesn't that doesn't make sense. sense you know we have to be willing to try something different mm-hmm. if we are not seeing the results that we want with what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. And so um I think a you know something that is misunderstood is that you know there's this idea this belief that you know you have to completely you know go to this opposite extreme where you got to you know if you're decluttering and your coach is asking you to you know start to you know pare down your your belongings um, they, they, they worry that they have to like go crazy and get rid of like half their things. <laughs> and the truth is, is that it, it really does require you to be open-minded to a change, but it doesn't have to completely, you know, flip your life upside down. Mm-hmm. In fact, um, usually what ends up happening is just making small steps is enough to encourage you and help you to open your eyes to possibilities. Mm -hmm. And it actually nudges you into being, you know, stepping into this new direction, you know, Mm -hmm. where, where we can be very timid and, and, and nervous about, you know, the, what ifs, like, what if this happens and what if this doesn't work and, but you'll never know until you try. And so I, I think it's always better to try something new and, you know, look for the open opportunities that await you as opposed to never getting started and mm-hmm. always wondering what if, you yes. know, and, and a big part in, and cause I've overcome my own fears. I I've, I've spoken on stage and had total stage fright. I've, you know, I, there are a lot of things I've done that um, I really didn't think I would ever do, but um, I have to surrender that fear and the, the hesitation, sometimes pride, <laughs> and, um, you know, really surrender that to the Lord, because, um, there are so many things that can hold us back from our pre- yeah, true potential. And I really believe that we, everyone has an, uh, just an incredible, um, transformation waiting for them to, to take place. It's just a matter of stepping into that. Absolutely. Well said. <laughs> So let's talk, uh, let's go back because you mentioned this earlier, but let's go back to this idea of time and busyness. Mm. One of the things that I try to help people understand and that I work with people on is distinguishing between busyness and productivity. But mm-hmm. I would love to hear your take on that. Yeah, it's interesting because um, I remember there was a time where I used to constantly catch myself saying, you know, if someone would ask me, oh, how are you doing? And I would constantly say, oh, great. Just really busy, you know? And I, um, I almost wore it like a badge of honor. Like I was mm-hmm. like, you know, I liked being busy and I, and I actually convinced myself at, for a long time that I thrived off of being busy. Mm-hmm. What I realized is that um, it was not the same as being productive. Yes, I had a full calendar and I was constantly doing something. I, I'm very much a doer. But um, because I don't I don't like sitting idle, I don't like you know being unproductive, mm-hmm. but being busy was not the same as being productive. Mm-hmm. And so what I learned was uh first of all, my priorities were not in alignment Oof. with what I said were my priorities. I claimed priorities were one thing, but what I was actually doing were not my priorities. So that was really important for me mm-hmm. to kind of pinpoint exactly what are my priorities. And really like write them down mm-hmm. uh, you know, that the act of writing things down really helps to, um, it, it just helps your mind to absorb what it is that you're, you have intentions. It helps you to set intentions. And so I went through this exercise that I now teach and, uh, writing down my priorities and looking at what are those activities that go along with those priorities Am I making time for them and actually setting aside, like creating a schedule, a calendar where I'm incorporating those priorities into my schedule 
And then everything else that's not a priority gets scheduled around that. Mm -hmm. And also um, setting boundaries in place. It's so easy to get distracted, to lose sight of what you're supposed to be focused on, what your intention was at one point Mm -hmm. and get distracted. It happens to everyone. Uh, There are ways to set boundaries so that that doesn't happen. And um, and, uh, another key part of helping me to go from busy to what I call balanced and and more productive was um, ensuring that my priorities were truly in alignment with what God's will was, Mm -hmm. because there were things that I wanted to pursue. But then once I really started seeking the Lord's guidance in that, I realized that my priorities were really not in alignment Mm -hmm. at all. And so um, that once I made that decision, um, all the, every time I pursued a, a priority, it felt so much easier. It never felt like I was struggling to get through a busy day. It felt like I was confident in what I was working to achieve. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That frantic energy when you are busy, busy, going, 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 it's not conducive to feeling energized or productive, or like you can do more or anything that is empowering or positive in any way, shape or form. You're just like, always like in the state of shock, almost like, frantic and going all over the place and it's not fun at all <laughs> yeah, the lord does not want that for us at all absolutely not and it reminds me of two things what you were talking about first that passage in the bible where your treasures are there your heart will be and i believe time is one of our more, most valuable treasures right so that is included in there and i heard someone say a long time ago you say you believe in something you say something is important to you show me your checkbook and your calendar right so mm-hmm. that's the two places where it shows up, what your true priorities are, what you really care about is in those two places. So I was just reminded of that while you were talking. Um, Now, this is such an important and I think such a a timely conversation, right? Because there's this hustle culture that is around us where everybody's just like, yes, you have to hustle, you have to go, you have to go. And it is important to go and do and things. But you mentioned a word that I would love for us to go back to, and that is intention. So Mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about intention within the work that you do. Yeah, you know, I I feel like um, for some people, like they they really like the idea of hustling. They, um, they, they're, you know, maybe they consider themselves a workaholic. They, they're, they're really intentional about you know, going after their goals. And, and I, I admire people who are ambitious. I think that, I think the Lord wants us to pursue, you know, goals, but I think that we have to be careful about, um, letting crossing over the lines where we are, um, depleting ourselves or, um, self-sabotaging our, our own well-being or, um, making sacrifices that the Lord really doesn't want us to make. And so, um, you know, I feel like we have this tendency to say yes to everything, whether we um, don't want to miss out on something, we just want to accept every invitation that comes our way, or we, you know, don't want to let someone down. We're a people pleaser, or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's like this guilt with saying no, they think no is a bad word. Yeah. Um, (laughs) You know, the truth is, is that if for every time we say yes to something, we are saying no to something Something else. else. Absolutely. So it's so important to really um, have a a, a really solid understanding of what, what do you want to be intentional about? You know, really like thinking that through, um, not just going randomly through your day, but really setting your intention, you know, first thing in the day, or some people like to do it the night before. But really just, you know, and I love praying about it, honestly. I, I think it's just a wonderful day to a wonderful way to set the day. But um set like really thinking through what what am I, what is my true intention for today? Not don't worry about this week or, or next month or at the end of the year, but focus on today, one day at a time. What is your intention? And you know, what what are your commitments? Are you are you committing to the activities? that are going to be in alignment with your intention. And um, I, I feel like once when you have a, a solid understanding of what, what it is that you want to be intentional with, 
things seem to fall in line. You know, you, 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 when you put that out there, it's, it's easy to stay on track with, you know, right systems in place, of course. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that um, just kind of randomly going throughout your day without it setting an intention is, um, you, it's you, can't expect, your day. <laughs> you can't expect yourself to get too far. Yeah, it's wasting your day, really. That's awesome. So anybody listening or watching who is thinking, okay, Crystal, I get you. I believe you. Systems are important. But how on earth do I get started? Is there one tip or two that you can give them so that they can start getting their lives into that alignment and that productivity that is aligned with who they are? Yeah. Uh, so I, I would say there's kind of this like series that I've implemented in my own life and that I, I teach with my clients. Um, and um, the first one is um, I, I really believe in spiritual disciplines. I feel like when you um, are intentionally partnering with the Lord in your day and um, in, in the season that you're in and, you know, to pursue your goals um, life is just so much easier and it feels so much more peaceful and it, you have more confidence and you're just, um, you, you can be assured that you are going, you know, going on the right path. Um, so I, I really believe in implementing those. Um, I believe in simplifying and decluttering. Um, it is just a, such a wonderful way to help you to um, feel at ease visually when you when you there, there are studies show that when our our spaces are clear and visibly you know um in order mm -hmm. it, it impacts how our mind is so you know just think a cluttered space equals a cluttered mind uh, a cleared space equals clarity in your mind That's so um you know it, incorporating habits that allow you to stay clutter free uh, and then organizing organization is such a blessing when you can uh, streamline your spaces so that uh, you you know exactly where everything is. Everyone in your household knows where things are. They don't, you know. There's uh, you cut that tension, and everyone's on the same page with keeping the house in order. Um, and then, of course, learning how to maintain that as well. Yeah. That's a big part of organization. Having that's where those systems come into play because Absolutely. you're learning how to keep up that on a regular basis. Um, so I have a, um, a guide that I share um, and it's available to all your viewers. Um, and it, it basically walks you step-by-step step through that whole process. Awesome, how can people access that? Um, so the link is uh, the org home, um, O-R-G home. Okay. Dot C-K dot page forward slash PDP dash guide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there will be a link to this in the show notes and in the description on YouTube, you will have a link so you can just click it and go. But if you were quick with the pen and you grabbed it, then more power to you. <laughs> so, Crystal, thank you. This has been as amazing as I thought it was going to be. Time flies when we are talking to great people like you. But before we go, how can people stay connected with you? How can they find you? Where can they go to just learn more about what you do? Um, thank you. So um, my website is uh, theorghome.com. And uh, there they can uh, connect to me on my Facebook group. Um, I have, I'm on all the socials, you know, Pinterest and Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, and uh, you can also connect with me like straight through email if you want to send me a, a message. And um, I, I hope that the guide that, uh, that you access blesses you. Amen. What is that email address? Uh, my email is crystal, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L at theorghome.com. There you go. Simple enough. So all this information will be again in the show notes and the description. Go connect with Crystal. Trust me when I tell you that when you start putting systems in place that relieve the overwhelm, that relieve the chaos, that declutter your life, you will feel such a difference in every area of your life because how one part of your life works is how every part of your life seems to work. So get connected with Crystal, get uh, the guide and Crystal, thank you so much again for being part of Sincerely Speaking and for sharing so much value with us today. Thank you, Marcy. It was a pleasure. 
you have found value in this conversation, share Sincerely Speaking with someone in your life that you know will find it valuable as well. And don't forget about my offer for a 30-minute path paving call free of charge, where you and I will sit down and trace a path from where you are to where you want to be and get you going on the path to success. I will see you next week and I will see you on the call. Chat soon.